So having established a physical posture that feels good and workable for you, you're invited to begin bringing your attention to the body. And by body, I'm referencing the actual tactile physical sensations that make up the moment-to-moment lived experience we call body. Body, the word, is just a concept, but it points to a lived experience. However, we do have a conceptual body made up of our thoughts about the body, our memories of the body, our images of the body. My first teacher, Chogam Trungpa Rinpoche, called this psychosomatic body. And in his teachings, he had some rather unique teachings on the four foundations of mindfulness. In mindfulness of body, he made the distinction between psychosomatic body and what he called body body. So here the invitation is to tune into body body, the actual physical sensations that we can notice and feel coming and going arising and falling away, moment to moment. To begin with, on the surface of the skin, from head to toe, so perhaps bringing your attention to the contact points between your body and the chair or the cushion, your feet in the ground, or the contact between your clothing and your skin, the weight of your clothing. Any sensations arising in relation to movement of air wherever you are or the air temperature. And perhaps the passage of air across the nostrils and or parted lips with each in breath and out breath. So the invitation is to gently bring your attention to this landscape of actual tactile physical sensation. And if you notice your attention wandering into one distraction or another, we simply and gently redirect our attention to the body. It's somewhat like when we're driving a car or riding a bicycle. If we notice we're starting to veer off into the next lane or onto the shoulder, we just make that correction. We just turn the wheel or we turn the handlebars. We make that correction. So here we just self-correct back to the body. And each time we come back, we could drop in with deeper curiosity. And as we're feeling into and witnessing the body, the actual tactile physical sensations of the body, You're invited to cultivate attitudinal qualities of openness, curiosity, non-judgment, self-acceptance, self-kindness, self-compassion, non-striving. You are invited though to generate curiosity, almost a passionate curiosity to know yourself, and in this case, know your own body as deeply as you can in this moment. And not evaluating yourself in the process, but just a gentle, you know, yearning or inclination to really know ourselves deeply and know the body deeply in the moment without striving. And we're talking about the actual sensations, so they could be tingling sensations, prickly sensations, sensations of warmth, coolness, aliveness, numbness.
And then as you're ready, you're also invited to begin exploring the internal landscape of sensation within the body. Activating our innate capacity for what's called interoception or introceptive awareness. Interoception is simply short for internal perception. And it references the body's capacity to feel itself from the inside out, as it were. So being curious about and willing to feel whatever is arising in the body. The overall weight and mass of the muscles and bones, the feeling of gravity holding us down. The presence of any physical discomfort, any aches or pains, stiffness. Gently cultivating a willingness to simply feel whatever's there without bias. Perhaps noticing that preferential mind, noticing how sensation arises as either pleasant, neutral, or unpleasant, and how with pleasant sensations we immediately have the arising of the mind of attraction, with unpleasant sensations, the mind of aversion, with neutral sensations, the mind of ignorance, we tend to check out. So just being with all of that, however it's arising, and just welcoming our experience just as it is, moment to moment, with curiosity, openness, self-acceptance. Perhaps we can feel the heartbeat, the pulse, the overall flow of nervous energy in the body. These qualities of energetic aliveness in the body. And again, if you need to redirect your attention to keep yourself in a workable, a range of workability, please be completely empowered to do that at any time. And again, if you find your mind wandering at all, simply gently redirect your attention back to the body and dropping in each time with greater curiosity. Ah, so, and that too. Really feeling into the body as deeply as we can. And finding within the body that sensate flow we call the breath. Feeling the belly rising and falling with the breath. The diaphragm muscle contracting and relaxing. The rib cage opening and closing. The intercostal muscles helping the rib cage to open and close with each in breath and out breath. Feeling the lungs fill with air and release the air. The whole process of receiving fresh oxygen into our bloodstream all the way down to our cells and then releasing carbon dioxide on the out breath. So that entire flow of the breath, the air just flowing in and out of the body of its own accord, that natural wave-like motion, just like waves lapping at the seashore, tuning into that, feeling that as deeply as we can. So there is a gentle effort here, an imitation anyway, to a gentle effort to really focus in on the body. And in doing so, we're gradually synchronizing body and mind. And in neurobiological terms, we're making a shift from the very noisy default mode network of the brain which is very active when we don't direct our attention to the attention stabilizing task positive network. And we can feel that shift because we're feeling the body. We feel our attention stabilizing. We feel our cognitive mind settling down, becoming quieter. And so that gentle effort to really feel the body as deeply as we can, as 
physically as we can. Helps us settle, helps us stabilize our attention. And with that attention, we're simply being with whatever is moment to moment. The depth of this internal landscape, this internal sensate landscape of the body is profound and perhaps endless. The entire body is sensory all the way down to the bones and including the bones. All living tissue, all containing neuronal cells connected to the central nervous system, the marrow of the bones, the outer white hard layer of the bones, the periosteum, all containing neuronal cells. Also the connective tissue, the musculature, major organs, digestive system, circulatory system, lymphatic system, the glands, all sensory, all feeling. So just cultivating a gentle curiosity to feel into the body and feel whatever we can feel as deeply as we can feel it. coming back again and again to feeling into the body as deeply as we can. And as we're doing so, there are two basic modalities of mindfulness and awareness. The first we might call observing or noticing. We could call it the witness mind. Sometimes it's called the watcher. And this is very important stage in practice. It allows us to actually step out of our experience with awareness and observe our experience. And when our attention stabilizes, there's also the possibility of relaxing into the second modality of direct sensing, a more non-dual sensing awareness. With witnessing or observing, we have the sense of an observer, a witness. And it may be subtle, but it's there. A sense of that I'm witnessing my breath or I'm witnessing sensation or I'm witnessing emotions. So it's a subtle or not so subtle separation. Nothing wrong with that. Very powerful to be able to sort of step out of being in our experience unconsciously to be consciously witnessing our experience. Really the beginning of our psychological and spiritual freedom and liberation. So very important. And with very stable attention, we can relax that sense of duality and relax into what we might call direct sensing. So for example, many of us practice following the breath, noticing the breath, observing the breath. So I know when I'm breathing in, I know when I'm breathing out. That's one name for mindfulness practice is presently knowing. So I know when I'm breathing in, I know when I'm breathing out. How do I know that? Well, I can feel it. And I, and I have a sense of observing it. I observe the breath flowing in and flowing out. So that's witnessing or observing, very important. And as my attention stabilizes, I might be able to relax into just feeling the breath directly without the sense of a feeler. Or even further, simply being the breath, simply being the breath. And in our practice, it'll be quite natural to move back and forth between getting lost in thought or experience altogether 
awakening into the witnessing mode where we're conscious and observing and present, and then perhaps relaxing into the more non-dual kind of presence and awareness. So that's the landscape we're working with, and it's all good, it's all practice. As you come back to the body again and again, and as you drop ever more deeply into the body and feel the body ever more deeply, all the way down to the bones and including the bones, you may begin to notice an kind of internal resonance or coherence or flow. The beingness of our experience, the subtle energy flow of our experience. It's always there, always present. We're generally not that aware of it because we're very externally oriented as human beings, very auditorily and visually oriented and caught up in discursive thinking a lot. But the more we drop into the body, there's an internal flow, an embodied presence that's very nurturing, that holds us. And the more we tap into it, it's like tapping into almost a womb-like experience of being enveloped in an exquisite beingness, attentiveness, a loving attentiveness, a loving beingness that's nurturing and healing. So just being open to that, curious about that. as a means of finding our way even more deeply into the body and also tapping into this internal flow or coherence that has a profoundly nurturing, supportive and healing quality. We're going to do a series of brief body scans. Most of you are probably very familiar with the body scan practice. So we're going to begin at the soles of the feet and scan up through the body in just a moment. I'll direct you. And as we do, you could imagine that the body is an empty vessel and that it's gradually filling with liquid. So as you move up from the soles of your feet, your body is filling with liquid. And of course, that liquid rises in a level way. So it's just moving up in a level way through the body, perhaps one millimeter at a time. And that liquid is presence. That liquid is embodied presence, awareness. And we can feel it moving through the body as we direct our attention. We can feel it as increased energy flow, subtle energy, warmth, even heat, increased blood circulation. There's a wonderful saying, where our attention goes or where our awareness goes, so the energy flows. We can actually feel our awareness moving through the body. So I'm gonna direct you once, and then we're gonna do a series of very brief body scans, seven of them, with the breath. The first one we'll do a little slower, but then the rest of them we'll do with the breath. And we're not gonna do the arms separately in this case, like is usually done. So as you're scanning up through the body and you get to the point of your body where your arms where your hands are, just start including that. And we'll just move up through the arms and the body together, all the way up through the shoulders, 
neck and to the crown of the head. And then we'll just let our awareness flow back down all the way to the soles of our feet. So I'm going to direct this one time that way, and then I'll direct this in doing so with the breath, a series of them, okay? So you might want to lean back in your chair a little bit for this. Be comfortable, if, don't, as long as you don't fall over, but you can make yourself comfortable. And bring your attention down to the soles of your feet, maybe wiggle your toes, get your attention down there, and again, focus in on the actual tactile physical sensations you can feel on the surface of the skin, and very importantly, within the body as well. Okay, so as you're ready, beginning to move from the soles of your feet up through the feet themselves, up through the ankles, up through the lower legs, feeling everything you can feel externally and internally, energetically, physically, moving up through the knees, up through the quadricep muscles and into the upper legs, thighs, femur bone. up through the hips and buttocks, pelvic area, lower belly, and then moving up the small of the back, up the spine, up through the abdominal cavity and the torso, and up through the upper back and the chest area, heartbeat, lungs filling with air, releasing the air, and you're including the arms as well, and then moving up through the collarbones, shoulder blades, up into the shoulders. And finally up through the neck, into the head, back, sides, front, facial muscles, crown of the head. Feeling the aliveness of the entire body from head to toe. And then just letting your awareness float back from the crown of your head down through the neck and shoulders, down the arms, down through the upper body waist, hips, pelvic region, buttocks, upper legs, knees, lower legs, and back to the soles of your feet. Right, so it's a very kind of quick, brief body scan. So we're going to do a series of seven of those now at your own pace with the breath. So on the in-breath, you're invited to scan up from the soles of your feet and do your best to really feel your attention moving through the body with a long, slow in-breath, all the way up to the crown of your head. And as you breathe in, you could feel the belly, fill the belly first, and then fill the chest. And then when you release the breath, the awareness just floats back down through the body, the soles of your feet. Right? And, you know, make these kind of deep breaths, but keep it comfortable. Keep it comfortable and workable for yourself. Okay? So we're going to do seven of these now. Right? So with the in-breath, we scan from the soles of the feet all the way to the crown of the head, Make a gentle effort to really feel our awareness moving through the body. On the out breath, the awareness flows back down to the soles of our feet. Okay? So let's do seven breaths like that. Seven brief body scans.
And then one final time, long in breath, easy out breath, scanning up through the body and down through the body. One final time. And then gently coming back to whatever meditation posture works for you and just staying with that internal feeling, whatever you're feeling in the internal landscape of the body. And whatever you're feeling is fine. You may really have tapped into a sense of flow and coherence. It might be very pronounced, it might be very subtle, or it might not be there at all and that no indication of anything other than that if you practice with this, you'll probably gain greater access. So just appreciating being fully present, feeling the body deeply. Feeling this mysterious thing we call life vibrating through the body. This miracle of life that occurs one breath at a time, one heartbeat at a time that we often take for granted. I'd like to invite us to contemplate the following about our experience as we continue to just focus in on the body, feeling the body as deeply as we can. That having a body, we experience every kind of sensation imaginable, pleasant, neutral, unpleasant, comfortable, not so comfortable, pleasurable, painful. And that's just part of having a human body. We're gonna experience illness and sickness, we're going to grow old. Eventually, we're going to move through our dying processes. And this is just part of having a human body. And we could live our lives like many beings do in constant fear of discomfort or pain and constantly chasing after comfort, even addicted to comfort. Or we could make the choice just to embrace the whole thing. I believe this is actually one of the ways to reclaim our dignity as human beings, as conscious beings, is to embrace the totality of our physical experience. You say, you know, I have a body, I'm gonna experience pain sometimes. I'm just gonna be curious about the whole thing and relax my addiction to comfort and relax my fear of discomfort and just embrace the whole thing. And realize it's all good. Even physical pain, it's not that any of us want to experience physical pain, but it's a good indicator that we're still alive. Right? And it's just the body communicating to us. The body's just saying we need to give the body some attention, right? When we have pain, the body's communicating that something needs attention. So embracing all of that and relaxing our fear around discomfort and pain, relaxing our addiction to comfort, and realizing it's all good, it's all life. Along with being sensory being, and the same is true for all our sense perceptions, sound, smell, sight, hearing, all arises as pleasant, neutral, and unpleasant. And we could just embrace all of it with curiosity and a willingness to feel, to experience. As well as being sensate beings, sensory beings were emotional beings. And we're going to experience every emotion imaginable all the warm and fuzzy emotions, gladness, contentment, peace, joy, happiness. And we're gonna experience fear and anxiety, sadness, disappointment, even envy, jealousy, hatred, anger, rage, all completely normal. We're emotional beings. There's never any reason to feel any shame or to feel bad about any emotion we might experience we do want to be conscious and responsible about what emotions we cultivate and what emotions we act on, but no reason to ever feel bad about any emotion we might have. In fact, the essence of emotion is wisdom. This is core to the Tibetan Buddhist tradition, that the very essence of our emotions, absent the identifications and the storylines, that the, absent, the essence of all emotions is actually wisdom. For example, the essence of anger is called mirror-like wisdom. 
So just appreciating we're emotional beings and just being willing to be with all of that, not making ourselves wrong for anything whatsoever, and being responsible about what we cultivate and act on. And then finally, we're cognitive beings, and we're going to experience every kind of thought imaginable. Brilliant thoughts, wise thoughts, contemplative thoughts, happy thoughts, peaceful thoughts, bizarre thoughts, silly thoughts, boring thoughts, perverse thoughts, angry thoughts. That's what our mind does. Our mind produces thoughts. And again, there's no reason to feel bad about any thought we would ever have. All completely normal, completely human. We can just let it all come and go. So again, feeling into the body as deeply as we can. And just feeling into the reality that I'm a physical being, I have a body, and I'm going to experience the full range of embodied sensate experience. I'm an emotional being, I'm going to experience the full range of emotional experience. I'm a cognitive being, I'm going to experience the full range of thought. And it's all good. It's all just simply part of being a human being. I'm an ordinary, good human being with innate goodness, innate wisdom. And it's all good. So just relaxing into and feeling the essential wholeness of our experience, the essential goodness within our experience. It's life. How could there be anything wrong with life? Can we imagine an oak tree sitting around having all kinds of feelings about not being a good oak tree, right? But that's what we do as human beings. So relaxing in that, just really embracing the totality of our experience and feeling the wholeness and goodness in the full range of our sensory, emotional, and cognitive experience and simply allowing ourselves to be, giving ourselves deep permission to simply be as we are, ordinary, simple human beings. Feeling beings, sensory beings, thinking beings. So I'd like to close our practice this evening with a little contemplation I've adapted with permission from Rick's work. I call it Safe, Resourced, and Connected. So I invite you to bring to mind that right here, right now, in this moment, you are safe, at least relatively so. So just say that to yourself. Right here, right now, I'm safe. I'm okay. Just repeating a phrase like that to yourself again and again. Right here, right now, I'm safe. I'm okay. So you're actually bringing forth the experience of feeling safe, and if that brings up memories of not feeling safe or concerned, let all that come and go. We're not repressing anything. But just keep bringing your attention back to the fact that right here, right now, at least I am relatively safe. At least for this moment, I am okay. I'm safe. I'm safe. The second contemplation is that right here, right now, I'm resourced. My basic needs are met. I have what I need. Right here, right now, I'm resourced. So repeating a phrase like that. So we actually bring forth the experience of feeling resourced. Right here, right now, I'm resourced. My basic needs are met. Food, warmth, shelter, water, and so forth. And taking ownership for the fact that as adults, we know how to resource ourselves. We can ask for help when we need it. So right here, right now, I'm safe and I'm resourced. And just breathing that into my nervous system and deeply into my body, heart, and mind, all the way down to the bones. Right here, right now, I'm safe and I'm resourced. And then finally, right here, right now, I'm connected. Right here, right now, I'm connected. Bring to mind your loved ones, your close family members, close friends, community members, and really feel yourself part of an interdependent web of caring human relationships. It's not perfect. We have our conflicts, but we are connected. So feel that quality of being connected with other beings and really held within the fabric of your human connections. Right here, right now, I'm safe, resourced, and connected. Actually, we know from current neuroscience, it's the same neural networks involved in deep interoceptive awareness that we've been working with in the meditation this evening are also involved in our ability to be connected to others and to create connection and safety and intimacy with others. So in the same way we're held within the womb of our own beingness, we're also held within the nested networks of our own human connections and social networks. So right here, right now, I'm safe, resourced, and connected. 
safe, resourced, and connected. Safe, resourced, and connected.